morsels. In this morsel, I will do a deep dive into the workings of the expression modifier, and I found a couple of surprises. We grow up learning how to read mathematical expressions, so it is arguably easier for us to read this than this. It's certainly more concise. Out of the box, the expression modifier comes with four scalar inputs, A, B, C and D. It has one output called, well, output. The value of the output is calculated from the values of the inputs using the expression string, the syntax of which is similar to that of C or C++, and which is pretty close to what you would write naturally, with a few new things thrown in for good measure. Here is a rig I prepared earlier to help with visualising what's going on. It's totally over the top and unnecessary, but I did it because I could. First, let's look at the operators that you can use in your expressions. You can do ordinary school arithmetic using the standard arithmetic operators. For example, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and up arrow means raise to the power. The expressions can be as complicated or as simple as you like. There are also comparison operators, which will return zero, meaning false, or one, meaning true, depending on the values of their arguments. So we have less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, is equal to, and is not equal to. These can be combined with the arithmetic operators in the way that you would expect. And finally, there are Boolean operators for conjunction, or AND, written ampersand ampersand, and disjunction, or OR, written vertical bar, vertical bar. There is one special three-argument expression form which will be familiar to C and C++ programmers. Written Boolean expression question mark expression 1 colon expression 2 evaluates to expression 1 if the Boolean expression is true and expression 2 if the Boolean expression is false. Combined with the Boolean and comparison operations, this can be very useful. The expression modifier also has a set of useful built-in functions. We have the standard trigonometric functions, such as sine, cos and tan, and their inverses, arc sine, arc cos and arc tan. Note that these work with radians for angles rather than degrees. There are also their hyperbolic cousins, which I won't say anything else about. There is a set of logarithm-related functions, log to the base 2, log to the base 10, which can also be written as simply log, the natural log, and the exponential function, which raises e to the power of its argument. There is a square root function, and there is a function called sine, not to be confused with sine, which returns minus 1 for negative numbers, plus 1 for positive, and 0 for 0. The abs function returns the positive value of its argument. floor returns an integer value by rounding down. seal returns an integer value by rounding up. And rint returns the nearest whole number rounding up for the midpoints. There are four functions, max, min, sum and average, which can take any number of arguments and which return the maximum, the minimum, sum and average of those arguments respectively. 
the mod function takes two arguments and returns the remainder when dividing the first by the second. The sign of the result is the same as the sign of the first argument. The clamp function returns a value lying within a particular range. If the first argument is smaller than the second argument, then the second argument is returned. If the first argument is greater than the third argument, then the third argument is returned. Otherwise, A is returned. Noise is a useful function for generating spatially correlated random values. Although random, the values will be similar to their neighbouring values. It can take up to three input arguments, so can be used for generating 3D noise values, and the results are in the range 0 to 1. You can use the single equals or assignment operator to assign values to the variables. The value of this expression is equal to the assigned value. In and of itself, this is not very useful, but you can combine it with the comma operator. Comma can be used to sequence several expressions, returning the value of the last one. This could be used, for example, to cache things that are used in multiple places in a complex expression. Four inputs might not be enough for you. Also, the names A, B, C and D are not exactly very descriptive. Fret not. You can add user channels to the expression modifier and use them by name in your expressions. For the programmers in the audience, this is kind of like declaring extra input-only parameters to a function. Here, I am adding three new variables, Fred, Jim and Bill, as user channels. We can now write expressions using these variables, but it doesn't work straight away unless you poke one of the standard input channels by feeding something into it. After that, it seems to work fine. This can be used to make expressions more readable. For example, the expression in my previous morsel, mod floor a over b, comma 2, could be more self-documenting by creating user channels index and x count for the inputs, and some local variables row and odd to give some context to the values that are calculated. So we now have that row equals floor of index over x count, which makes sense, and then the result is odd, which is mod of row and two. Note that assigning to row and odd is just a convenience to give them understandable names. The values of these channels are not changed by these assignments. The values exist only inside of the expression modifier. Use the expression channel modifier to simplify your graphs when you have lots of arithmetic. You know it makes sense.